YouTube! What's up guys? How you guys doing? This is Mike. This is Jenny. Pratt Family Homestead. Hey, we thought we would, uh... Go ahead. But what? <laughs> I just throw it off. <laughs> Do a 2016 pig review. Uh, how our pasture-raised pork went. Uh, how our pasture-fed pasture-raised pork went. Um, yeah. Uh, I get hung up on terminology sometimes. It, pasture raised does not mean pasture fed right uh, or at least not 100 percent pasture fed uh, a lot of pasture raised is rotating pigs around not destroying the area feeding them pasture but also lots of commercial feed as well yes uh so what we attempted this year was 100 percent pasture fed 100 percent pasture raised um we were supplementing a little bit of feed for the first uh, five months or so. Only I, at night, just a couple pans. Only at night, a couple pans. I think at the most when they were at the biggest, when they were still on pasture, it was about the equivalent of two cups each of pig feed, I think. I think. Uh, along with lots of other pumpkins and... Peppers and carrots <sighs> and cucumbers. Just and all lots sorts of, stuff. of garden goodies. So for their first... I keep using this term 95-98%. Uh, for the first five months, 95% yeah. of what they ate was pasture. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I don't know. There's, seem, there's a bit of a controversy on all that. But I can tell you what. Pigs eat grass. And they, <laughs> they eat, eat a lot of grass. clover. And they eat alfalfa. And in some of our videos, some, some people questioned uh, what were the weed stems sticking up that they weren't eating. And that was actually the uh, uh, clover that they were stripping the leaves off of. And if we left them in a paddock too long, they went back and ate those. But you probably saw some of our videos, and I'll put the playlist up here. Um, uh, Jenny mowing down paddocks after we had uh, moved, moved the pigs. Yep. And um, that knocked all those stems down and stuff. But overall, fail or succeed what do you think about pasture pig? Oh, I think we succeeded. I think we succeeded in the, in the too. overall big picture of everything, we succeeded. Uh, we experimented, we played, we liked what happened, we ran out of time. We ran out of time, but that's partially not due to our Well, well, well it's it, well, okay, well, it's kind of due to our own fault, kind of not due to our own fault. We we got the pigs in mid-June and uh, by the time November rolled around, the pasture stopped growing and the pigs weren't ready. So after five months, actually that'd be more like four and a half months, is that right? Yeah. Um, they were at, well, the biggest ones were 150 pounds. And at first I kind of thought that was a fail, which I talk about one of those videos in the playlist. Um, but after I got to rethinking that, the pigs ate grass, clover, and alfalfa. And they got to 150 pounds in... Four and a half, five months. That's pretty good, I that thought. That's really good, yeah. We knew going they into... They were very small when we got them. Yes. They were very small. We knew going into it that when you're pasture feeding, when you're 100% pasture feeding a pig, they're not going to grow as fast as when you're feeding them commercial feed. It's just not going to happen. No. And um, like I said, we <laughs> supplemented lots of other stuff, pumpkins and stuff. But... Well, that too is uh, in comparison to our first two that we did. Is These guys had a lot more room to run around and be active, which counteracts food going in and <laughs> them getting fat and and they enjoyed they and ran and ran and ran they were like little nascar pigeons <laughs> and yeah so they they really enjoyed their open space yeah they did we started them off in uh paddocks well we started them off in our big paddock but then i realized they needed smaller paddocks to be easier to manage and um so we rotated them in and out of each paddock um and they, they would mow it down We'd move, We'd move them. them, it would grow back, and it was amazing how fast it would grow down, and it was amazing how fast they'd chew it down. Or, it was amazing how fast it grew back, yeah. and then how fast it got chewed down. So we overall call it a success. Um, there are a couple fail points, though, and one of the fail points we already kind of touched on was is we brought them off pasture when it stopped growing. We did not feed them hay. We could have kept doing that, and we could have kept that going, and I... I kind of wish we point, would have. We were already into December, and it's kind of like, all right, it's getting cold. Yeah, well, it was and, November. But, oh, yeah, November. Uh, but we moved them over to our new garden and let them... 
Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we let them rip up our new garden for us, uh, yeah. and they got all the commercial feed that they wanted at that point. Yeah. And uh, and actually even a little before that. So um, the other fail? Water. Yeah. They would not figure out. We use a lot of honey. Trying to get them <laughs> and peanut, to, butter. And peanut butter to try to get them to drink out of those watering nipples. And for whatever reason, these pigs just, nope, they, they wanted their pan full of water. And then they're, they dumped the pan because they wanted their wallow. We and, spent so much time hauling water this summer. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. It was. Our, our other pigs, we're used to the watering nipples. The, the pigs that we, the first pigs that we had, they took to those water nipples just like that. Yeah, and so we thought it was going to be easy peasy, and man, we could not get those pigs. So that was a, a big fail. 2000, 2017, 2018 will be a different video, but those pigs will be confined to his place. <laughs> they're going to drink out of him. I mean, I'm not, not inhumane, but they're going to be put in a small confined place for a little bit until they figure out the watering nipples, and then we'll put them out on pasture. Yeah. And or then, whatever we're going to do. And then they can go roam and be free. Right. So uh, it, it really kind of stunk that we didn't get to finish them on pasture like I wanted. I wanted some grass-fed pork. Piggy, I wanted to, piggy, piggy. to try that. So... Okay, TJ, how you doing? Good. All right, do you know why I called you downstairs? No. All right, I want to ask you about the pigs, okay? Now, okay. for starters, what did you think about those pigs, those four pigs we had this year? They weren't, they weren't as good as the ones we had before. They weren't as nice, and they didn't like, they didn't like people as much as ham and bacon did. Uh, yes, ham and bacon were the first two that we did when we very first moved here a year and a half, or well, two and a half years ago. But one reason they probably they weren't as nice, they still let us pet them and all that, but we did not interact with them nearly as much, and that was because we didn't want to get as, as attached to them. But we could still pet them and stuff and all that. Yeah. They just didn't roll over like dogs like the other ones did and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, what's your overall feeling on butchering animals or having the, the pigs butchered? Well, at, like the first ones, I didn't, I didn't care. I cared more about the first ones and I, ham and bacon than I did about these these four because. It's really hard to get. It's really hard to butcher animals that you've become very attached to, mm -hmm. isn't it? And we were very attached to those first pigs, but still, getting these four, just thinking about it, it's kind of hard. It's kind of rough, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you think about eating them? I like you know they take they taste really good. <laughs> it does. That homegrown uh, pork is pretty good, huh? Yeah. So, so you're comfortable eating them? I mean, I know it's really hard to get them to the butcher. It's really hard to think about them being killed and butchered and mm -hmm. stuff. But, but in the end, you're okay eating it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, buddy. Bye. All right, folks. The one and only. Andrew. Andrew Pratt in the house. Hey, I got some questions about pigs for you, okay? What did you think about our four pigs this year? They were, they were good. They were good? They were pretty nice? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we didn't play with them a lot or anything, did we? No. Um, did, uh, but we did. We liked watching them run around and stuff. And even when mom had the lawn out, they'd like chase her sometimes, wouldn't they? They'd run around and chase her. Uh, and we could pet them sometimes and stuff, huh? Yeah, um, but we didn't play with them a whole lot. But we took really good care of them, didn't we? You can answer questions. You can say yes or no. <laughs> Did we take good care of them? Yes. All right. Um, okay, so now the next question is kind of a hard question, okay? How did you feel about us taking them and them being killed and butchered? It was kind of sad. It was pretty sad, wasn't it? It's always sad to take animals... Uh, to be butchered. So so that is very sad and that's kind of a hard thing to think about, huh? Yeah. But what did you think about eating them? It was good. You like how it tastes, how it comes back from the butcher and it tastes? Okay, so are you happy we do all that? Yeah. I mean, I know taking them to the butcher is very sad, but are you happy that we raise our own meat? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, buddy. Bye. All right, say hi. T tell everybody your name. Hi. What's your name? Grace. All right, can you sit up a little bit, please? 
Okay, I want to ask you some questions, okay? Do you want to answer some questions for me? What did you think about our pigs this year? Did you like them? Mm. When they were running around outside and in the grass and stuff, did you like them? <laughs> yeah. Were they funny? They did a lot of running, didn't they? They, they, they played with themselves a lot. <laughs> did you ever pet them? You can answer questions. Did you ever pet them? Can you say yes or no? Yes. And did you like petting them? Yeah? Yes. Okay, so then what happened? Uh, us butchered them. We butchered them or we took them to the butcher? Was that kind of sad? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but after we got them back from the butcher, we were eating them, huh? Was it good? And you like those smoked pork chops, don't you? For the girl that does not eat very much ever, <laughs> she is wolfing down some smoked, smoked pork chops. All right. You got anything else you want to say about the pigs? No? Okay. Thank you, darling. Say bye. Bye. All right. So here we go. Now I got... Faith. All right. So Faith, you've heard what I've been asking the boys and what I've asked your sister? Yeah. So you've been spying on us? No. You've been listening into my conversations? Well, I've been a mom from helping what? her. Out. What? Mom's looking through her jewelry, so I'm in there with her. Oh, so you were listening to me and not mom. Well, she's not exactly saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so... So you know the questions I'm asking. So what did you think about the pigs this year? I liked them, especially the Hereford. Yeah, that was, we really did like the Hereford. He was, he was the second smallest, the third biggest, however you want to say it. He was third on the totem pole, uh, but he was the boss, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He moved all of them around. Please stop shaking around, darling. He moved all those other pigs around and he, he, he was the boss. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did you, you petted them and stuff, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. So, the difficult question: What did you think about taking them to butcher? I don't like it. No, you didn't, did you? It's a pretty sad day, isn't it? Are you okay? Um, so, what did you think about dinner last night? It was good. And what did we have for dinner last night? Pork chops. Not only pork chops, but they were smoked pork chops. And what did you think about that bacon the other morning for breakfast? Uh, it was good, but... It was good. And she, what she's hesitating about is it was the end cut. So I had some very thick... I had to slice some of it and some very thick cuts and stuff. And it was... A couple pieces were a little weird, but... Okay. Overall, are you happy we raise our own meat? Huh? Yeah. I, okay. All right. Um... That's enough from the kids. Let's go get mom. So let's run through numbers. And some of these numbers just can't be, I don't know, there's going to be other factors that need to be uh, put into the, the actual bottom line of the numbers, right? Is that where we're at, numbers? Well, why don't you run through like the size of your paddocks and how long they were there real quick. Okay, so the first paddock in the very first video when we unloaded them was... Um, I believe it was about 65 by 100, and when they were little pigs, and they were in there for a long time. Yeah, they were. We and were kind of surprised. They were... We thought they were going to go through it a lot faster than they did. Right, but they but, were little. But they were little, <laughs> and they hadn't been out on pasture yet. Yeah, when we got them, they had just, just come... finished weaning. You know what? That's another fail. I should put this in here real quick. What kind of pigs were they? Uh, I was told I was getting your... We requested Hereford. Right, but I knew it was going to be a, a Hereford Yorkshire cross. Right. And as you saw, we had the one brown and white pig. That was Hereford, Herford. had a nice tail, everything. And as I got pointed out by some viewers, the tails of all the other pigs were docked. Yeah. So we're, that can be like, possibly we were given some factory rejects instead of yeah. the mixes that we asked for. Uh and obviously the one pig was a runt like no oh so tiny and but he ended tiny. up with a good hanging weight we'll get yeah, to all the hanging weights but but he stayed tiny for a very long time yeah. it wasn't until we got them split up the first two went to butcher and then the hereford and the runt stayed behind 
that he finally started catching up. But it wasn't because the other three like pushed him out of the way or anything. He mm. ate just as much as anybody yeah. else. He just didn't grow. So, I, I can't. I don't know for sure. I don't know enough to know for sure. But I feel like I got taken for a ride. I I know I ended up with one Hereford. One Hereford. Um, but oh well, we got we got we got pig in the freezer. So, um, so for the first uh, three months or so, they were in paddocks that were about except for that very first initial deal. But they were in paddocks that were about um, I believe it was like thirty three by fifty, mm -hmm. and, and there was eight of those. And there was eight of those, four in front, four in back, and we would just keep a circle going, and it worked really well. Except um, I won't consider that a fail. It was a big learning experience. I won't do it like that with myself anymore. That was uh, very time consuming to move the pigs. Um, working 40, 50 hours a week. Jenny is busy like crazy here at the house. And then to have to go out and move pigs, move water, move food. Move house. Move their, move their hut. Um, and some of my future plans, I think there's going to be a centralized pig area with access to different areas yeah. uh, where I can just open close gates or whatever. So after three months, um, the last two months, they, they were going through those paddocks so fast, we were moving them probably every four days, it seemed like. Yeah, initially they like. stayed in them for like a week, 10 days. Yeah. Some, sometimes we could even stretch it up to two weeks, just depending right. on how it was looking. But then it wasn't sustaining them for very long, just a couple of days at a time. So we, we took... Uh, we took the eight paddocks and made them four, two in the front, two in the back, and kept rotating, circling them for the next two months. And that that went back to, it was lasting seven to ten days. And it quickly got and down. And quickly to, went down to like four days. Quickly, <laughs> quickly went down to four days. And then the pasture stopped growing. And then that's when you saw the videos of us uh, moving them into the garden, putting them on, on feed. So yeah. um, all of that worked great. And if I had more land, <laughs> if I had more time, I am a firm believer in that whole system. There is, there is no reason you cannot raise pigs on grass, especially if you're doing it for yourself. I've had some people point out that if you're doing it commercially, well, commercially, you're raising pigs for at least for some of, some of your income. You want to get the pigs in and out and, and sold. Then, the, yes, the commercial feed option, which is probably what I'm going to do next year, a little preview there. Uh, the commercial feed option is... Um, it really is the way to go. Better way to go. Uh, yeah. You can still have pigs out on pasture, completely happy in commercial feeding them. That is great. You get the pigs in and out, and, and you got the money in the pocket and the pig in the freezer. Um, but the way we did it this year, I'm a very firm believer in it, and it worked. The pigs mm -hmm. were growing. They're growing slower, but if I had more land, more time, yada yada, uh, I would still be doing it. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we made some notes here so we could not get sidetracked yeah, too much. Yeah, kind of off a little bit. So then we put them on the auto feeder when we yep. moved them. And yeah, and so when we moved them into the garden, they got all the commercial feed they wanted. We kept yep. the we kept the feeder full, and well, they did go empty a couple times, but um, <laughs> and they let uh, us know. And they let us know. Uh, and Banging we, on everything. We just let them eat. So yeah. here's kind of a weird thing about that is each pig in the last two months which we only had two pigs for about a month and a half, and then we had just the other two. other two for a month and a half. So we had four for like a month and a half on feed, and then two, two for, for like a month. month. Yeah. So, or but each... Like three so, weeks. Yeah. yeah, something. But each pig in that time, if you averaged it out between the four pigs, each pig ate like 10 to 12 bags of feed. And actually, I did figure it out. What was it? We got some solid numbers for you coming up. But each pig in that ate 10 to 12 uh, bags of feed, which is about what the pigs that we raised over the winter two years ago, those were our first pigs, they ate about... 12 or 13 each. 12 or 13 inch in their the whole life six lifespan. six months that they were here. Uh, and actually, it might have been just a hair more, because I'm trying to remember numbers of what we charged my buddy. But anyways... They like inhaled the food. Yes, they did, and <laughs> they grew. We did. We did go through about a bag a month when they were on pasture That's with true. the night feedings. So it wasn't all in the last 
two months. Right. So that that instead all, of it was instead like eight or nine bags instead per of ten. Pig right. In those last few months, but still that's a lot of food. Right. So, um, so they had all the feed they want once they were in the garden. Once they were off pasture, they had all. The, we still threw them pumpkins. We still threw them anything uh, from left over from the garden. Yeah, and from the house generally just veggie scraps. I don't think we really eggs, goat milk, oh, whey. Oh, eggs, goat milk, whey. Yep. Yep. We did all that. We so, did that. We did the eggs the whole time for like every right. meal that they got. They got eggs um, for the extra protein, but the milk and stuff didn't come until right. we started milking. So. so, what's the bottom line? What? How much should we spend on these pigs, and how much should it get down to costing us per pound? I may try to throw some stuff up here so you guys can actually see the numbers. I know I'm a visual person, so if somebody's rattling off numbers. I can follow along, but I really like to see it. So I'm going to try and put that in here for you. So we had two pigs go to two different butchers. We had two pigs go to one butcher, two pigs go to a different butcher. I would say completely different operations, uh, yes. completely different conveniences. Yep. Um, and completely, yeah, just different ways of doing stuff. And even one is super close and one is 45 minutes away. <laughs> so we got... We got a little comparison here, and like I said, I'm gonna, if, if I get creative tonight, I, I'm going to try and put a little chart up here for you. So we went to Jerome Country Market uh, in Jerome, Michigan, and we went to Nagel's Meat Market. I don't know if it's called Meat Market, but it's Nagel's, Nagel's Meat, Meat Market. Na Nagel Meats. Or something. Nagel Meats in Homer, Michigan. Uh, so everything I'm going to say, I'm going to say Jerome first, then Nagel in case I forget to mention that. So Jerome Country Market, we turned our pigs in on a Wednesday morning, first thing. We got them back that following Monday night. In fact, they called Monday afternoon, did they call you? So five days we had those pigs back. Yep, it was a five day turnaround. And that includes smoking. Right. Uh, Nagel meats was four weeks. To, for us, uh, well, Maybe we'll do that at the end. Okay, so then Jerome Country Market is only five minutes away. Nagel's is 45 minutes away. Nagel's, uh, Jerome Country Market vacuum seals their product. Uh, and did you put that other part on here? Okay, so Jerome Country Market vacuum seals their product and they put the poundage on the packaging. On every package. On every package. So. This package of two pork chop weighs this much. Nagel's um, paper wraps all their stuff with a stamp on it saying what it is. Except the bacon and ground sausage. Those are uh, the wrap, like the... The bacon's plastic. vacuum sealed. Yeah, and then the sausage you know, is you know the little meat baggies. Bags. And, no, and no individual poundages on the packaging. Uh... Jerome Country Market, we find to be reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. um, I really have nothing to compare anything to. So Jerome Country Market, we find it to be reasonably priced. Nagel's is much cheaper. Uh, so talking cost, Jerome Country Market is $45 for the kill. Nagel's is $20 for the kill. Uh, the butchering fee per pound, uh, Jerome Country Market, $0.45 cents a pound. Nagel's 35 cents a pound. Uh, smoking fee per pound. Jerome Country Market 50 cents. Nagel's 35 cents. Uh, Jerome Country Market does have an additional fee for links and they do for patties as well. Yeah. Links and patties uh, at, is that right? 50 cents a pound? 50 cents a pound. Okay. Uh, there are no additional fees at Nagel's. Uh, uh, for Jerome Country Market, where a lot we they give you the option of keeping the fat, the liver, the heart. Uh, Nagel really uh, we could keep the fat and the neck bones. I'll say this: Nagel was upfront about keeping the fat. It's on their cut sheet as an option. Jerome Country Market, we didn't re even realize that two years ago when we took in the pigs. Yeah, we didn't know it was an option. It's not listed on their cut sheet. So right. So I asked house. about it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that's cool." So they wrote on there, "Keep fat." So. Uh, so now we're going to do price comparison, and we're going to use the Hereford. That uh, that's the the whole pig that we ended up keeping. Mm -hmm. um, 
We took it to Jerome Country Market, but we're going to do a price comparison if we would have taken it and had the same exact thing done to Nagel. So, Jerome Country Market. So, we had a hanging weight on that Hereford of 169 pounds. Uh, the kill at Jerome was 45 and it was 20 at Nagel. The, so, the total butchering fee at Jerome Country Market was one, or it was, I'm sorry, $76.05. Mm -hmm. And at Nagel, it was fifty nine fifteen. Smoking ninety one pounds of meat at <laughs> kind of so good. We had all the pork chops smoked, and yeah, the the hams on that Hereford. We didn't get a lot of bacon out of that Hereford. We got ended up with I think thirteen pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and our pigs last year we got twenty one mm -hmm. or twenty four I think. 20, no, twenty twenty three to twenty four. Yeah, it was twenty one or twenty two. Uh, Close enough. But these hams were, these are cut in half hams, so four hams for the one pig were each 10 pounds. Yeah. His butt was 40 pounds. We had big butt jokes all the time about that. Oh, him. yeah. He, yeah. He uh, uh, so anyways, smoking, smoking 91 pounds was $45.50 at Jerome, and at Nagel, it was thirty one eighty five. So the grand total butchering cost for the Hereford at Jerome, we paid 166 65 166.55 and uh that would have that everything the same would have cost us 111 at nagels so that's a pretty big price difference we have some negatives that we don't like at at nagels like we don't care for that paper wrapping and we like the, the poundage on each yeah, individual I like to know thing what everything and is. Well, we had to we we had to weigh the hams to know what they were right and um Which, and then the four weeks but man you're talking fifty-five dollar, fifty-five cents difference there in a butchering fee. That that's a that good a chunk of money. Difference. It really is. So total cost per pound. What did we do? This same, and we're going to do the same comparison uh, uh, between Jerome Country Market butchering and uh, Nagel. And what I forgot to put on here, and I'm going to try and slice it in, is if the cost per pound if we would not have butchered it. Which maybe we can do that if real we quick. Have not have butchered. If we would not have paid for the butcher. If we would have done it. Oh, that would uh, have been like 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> so hundred and sixty six fifty five at Jerome Country Market. Uh, and then, the, so this price is going to apply to both pigs. Uh, 70, pounds, $70 for the cost of the piglet. And we spent in feed divided by four. So it's not a really fair deal, but divided by four pigs. $116.91. That comes to a grand total of $353.46 at Jerome Country Market, which breaks down per pound on the hanging weight to $2.09 a pound for um, all of our pork. Yeah. At Nagel, with the $111 butchering, $70 piglet fee, and the same amount of feed, $116.91, that came to a total of Two hundred ninety-seven dollars and ninety-one cents, which gave us a per pound on the hanging weight of a uh, hundred and or a dollar seventy-six per pound. That's a pretty big difference. It's, yeah, that's thirty-three cents. So, so we got the convenience of Jerome Country Market five minutes away. Uh, we love their packaging. We love their product. Uh, Nagel, I'll say we like their product too. We just we sampled mm -hmm. the smoked smoked pork chops last night. You keep calling them smart. Smoked, smoked. Uh, so um, it's it's a it's a toss up. We might do one one of each next year. Now, go ahead. No, go ahead. Now, what those prices don't? Do you have your phone? Yep. Uh, what's two ninety seven? Or, I'm sorry, add those two together and divide by 169 or whatever it was. Um, what these prices don't include is we sold one and a half pigs. Um, so after I figure that in for us, all these prices go down considerably even more. So if we would have butchered ourselves at Nagel, okay, I got that if you want to do the other one. Well. If we would have butchered our... It would have been the same. It's the price of the pig and the pig. Oh, yeah. No kidding. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, it works. If we would have butchered these ourselves, done all the smoking and curing and all that stuff ourselves, it would have only been a dollar and ten cents a pound. Uh, 
even even with the butcher, I mean, we're ecstatic about that, really. Um, so, so yeah, so there is this for us gets even cheaper because we did sell one and a half pigs. Mm -hmm. We did not make a killer bunch of money on it or nothing, um, but it helped. Uh, but what hurt is we gave our parents uh, each half of a pig. Yeah. They split one. So out of the four pigs, we kept one, one and a and half. half. We gave one one to our parents, a half to one parent, a half to the other. The only thing they paid was butchering. Oh, and they paid the price of the piglet. The, yeah, they split the cost of the piglet. Right. So, but they didn't cover any of the feed or right. And then the headache of moving <laughs> them. <laughs> and we were so happy to do that. Um, they keep wanting to give us more money, and we're like, no, no, no that no, will no, no. ruin our excitement. Do was, not give us any more fun. money. It's nice to be able to share. Yeah, and uh, then we sold a pig. Uh, we pig sold a pig. pig to one of my co coworkers and half a pig to her best friend. So uh, those prices don't include it, aren't included in this um, this breakdown. So overall, twenty four minutes right now, baby. Uh, the pastured, grass fed. Grass, clover, alfalfa, uh, fed pig. I'm a, I'm a believer in. You need space. You need time. Um, not only you need personal time, like to move them and move all their stuff. And yeah, but time to also let them grow. Right. So, uh, if we would have got those pigs two months earlier, we think we think we would have been sitting real good, and we yeah. probably would have finished them off on hay at that point, come probably. November. Um, they probably they might not have been ready come November, but uh, we I think we would have gone ahead and bought a bunch of hay and fed it to them. So, or they would have played in it. One or or, <laughs> we did feed them some hay sometimes, mm -hmm. and they they gobbled it right up. They did. Yeah. They, they played in it a little bit, yeah. and then they're like, "Oh, this is our food." <laughs> <laughs> so we hope you found that interesting. I I always love the number breakdowns. Stop hitting my chair. <laughs> I always. I always love the uh, the numbers breakdown, so I hope you kind of enjoyed that. Um, and like I said, I'm I am a believer in the pasture fed, pasture raised pork. Grass piggies. Grass piggies. <laughs> you got anything, baby? Any final thoughts? I miss my piggies. She does miss the piggies, and I think in the beginning of this video, I recorded some of the kids' thoughts, and I think I've put it in the beginning of this video. Um, or at least bits and pieces. Or at least bits and pieces. So um, their overall deal is they love the pigs while they were here. Love seeing them running around and everything. Uh, hated them going to the butcher. Loved eating them. <laughs> and that's yeah. that's all your sediments too. That's my sediments too. I mean, that that is just how it is. Um, they are... Jenny and I have talked about this. Pigs are such neat animals that I, I don't know how we don't end up with permanent pigs here at some point. I, a boar and a sow. I, I don't know how we don't end or up with Or at that. least a mini pig that never goes anywhere just because they're so funny. Something. Mini bacon! No! Uh, oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mini pig that stays. Something. All they right. are really neat. And I also want to thank everybody... That joined the live show like two nights ago. Um, the topic was supposed to be pigs, and and we did cover pigs. We but did talk we about pigs. Ended up on horse a lot. Hey. <laughs> yes, pig, a lot of hay. <laughs> the pig conversation is Tim, but the horse conversation is me. So we gotta have a balance in there. But all right. Thank you guys very much. I hope you found this a little informative. If you have any questions, please ask. If there's a yep. ton of questions, I might make a quick quick follow-up video so um please ask away I, I will answer as honestly as i can and with as much information as i think i might know about so yeah we're not professional we're just trying stuff 2017 and 18 pig plans video coming out soon separate video i'm gonna do them in one because 2018 will be a very it's still a lot like, can it, happen between now and then. Yes, and and even 2017, a lot can happen between now and then. Yeah, I'm kidding. Even though it is 2017, so yeah. Um, all right, guys, we really appreciate the time you took to to watch this, and hopefully you like the numbers and. It made sense. Well, yeah. Hopefully, I don't know if you'll like. Maybe you think two dollars and nine cents a pound's junk, but 
I meant hopefully you like the number breakdown. So, <laughs> uh, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. I'm Mike. I'm Jenny. Pratt Family Homestead. Please like, share, subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And, uh, yeah, we've been blowing up Instagram this weekend, and people have been so interactive on Instagram and Facebook. It's been, yeah. um, it's been really cool. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.